Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. Listen, I'm doing a really important presentation on heart nutrition. So many people have heart problems, but they don't recognize the connection between the nutrition and heart problems. We're going to talk about how to support every aspect of your heart with nutrition. And from the muscular uh, point of view, which is underneath angina, that's chest pain, enlargement of the heart, that's called cardiomegaly, or just heart attacks in general. We're going to talk about the electrical problems of the heart, and I'm going to keep it really, really simple so everyone can understand this, but arrhythmias, palpitations, atrial fibrillation, and what's behind that. Um, we'll talk about the vascular aspects of heart problems and clogged arteries, placking, high blood pressure, heart attacks, and what you can do right now to support and prevent these problems. And then we'll talk about the valvular issues, which could be murmurs and some other issues that a lot of people have, but they don't recognize the connection between nutrition and heart. These things, the heart is one of the fastest responding organs in the body to nutrition. So register now below and I will see you on the inside. I'd like to share with you the top remedies for the cardiovascular system. So let's cover all the different potential problems with the heart and give you an alternative. Now, just so you know, anything that I say is not meant to replace your medical care. Check with your doctor before implementing any of this information. Now, that being said, the first thing we're going to talk about is the fuel for the heart. The heart primarily runs on either glucose or fatty acids, a small amount of ketones, lactic acid, maybe a little bit of amino acid. So the more the heart is damaged, the more difficulty the heart's going to be able to access energy from glucose and fatty acids. And this is why ketones can bypass that damage mechanism and feed the heart directly. This is why I recommend you go on a ketogenic plan, okay? So um, it's going to really help your heart. One of the biggest symptoms of a failing heart is fatigue, especially upon exertion like exercise, or even going up a flight of stairs. If you do the ketogenic diet, you're gonna find that fatigue goes away pretty quick. Let's first start out with a clot. Now, the medical treatment for a clot uh, could be some medication like warfarin, which uh, blocks vitamin K1, and so then you're gonna not clot as much. But there are some natural things that are out there that you should investigate. Number one, something called NATO kinase. This is from NATO, which is fermented soybeans. And NATO kinase is an enzyme that can help dissolve clots. It prevents thrombosis, okay? So it's anti-thrombotic. So NATO kinase is one remedy, and then garlic. So garlic has anti-clotting factors, okay? Now there's other natural things, but these are my two favorites. All right, next is placking. Now with a plaque, the first thing you have is some type of damage to the vessel of the heart, usually because there's too much oxidation or inflammation. And then you have this chain reaction that occurs with the body forming a Band-Aid out of cholesterol, protein, and calcium, okay? And so the best thing to do for clots is to um, do something that would have prevented the problem in the first place, which is a powerful antioxidant called tocotrienols. This is a type of vitamin E that I like better than the tocopherol because tocotrienols works like 50 times stronger than a tocopherol. And so it's a really good antioxidant for the heart especially. And it also can help you if you have angina because it allows the heart muscle to get more oxygen capacity. So angina is chest pain. So when the heart cramps, you need more oxygen. So with plaque tocotrienols, there is some great data on tocotrienols helping to dissolve um, fibrosis. Now, I'm not going to say that that's going to help you in your situation, but there is some data out there. Now, vitamin K2 can help you with calcium buildup because K2 helps to direct calcium into the bone. So if you're getting a buildup of calcium in the wrong places, whether it's the joint or the artery, K2 is an important uh, vitamin. And it works together with uh, vitamin D3. And then vitamin C, and I'm not talking about the synthetic version, I'm talking about consuming a lot of foods with vitamin C or a food-based vitamin C is a very good antioxidant to protect the inside of the arteries. All right, let's talk about cholesterol. Um, 
and I'm not just talking about cholesterol, I'm talking about a bad lipid profile where you have high triglycerides, maybe you have high levels of the wrong type of LDL and your ratios are not good. A really good remedy for all cholesterol problems would be niacin. You don't want to get the non-flush niacin, you want to get straight niacin. And niacin is a B3 vitamin that can help you uh, balance out the cholesterol ratios and give you more HDL to LDL and et cetera. And niacin helps convert cholesterol to bile salts, okay? And so this next remedy called tutka is a type of bile salt that also helps transport cholesterol out of the body. Angina, which is chest pain that could come from a clogged artery, or if the arteries are clear, it could be a problem with the heart muscle itself. And so tocotrienols is what I recommend, and also coenzyme Q10, which is a very powerful antioxidant um, for the mitochondria, especially for the heart. So when people take statin drugs, like Lipitor, Lipitor depletes coenzyme Q10, the very thing that you need for the heart muscle. So people take statins for high cholesterol, but what about the heart muscle itself, right? We need to support that. Coenzyme Q10 is really good for people with heart damage and people that are aging, just to give you that extra energy for the heart muscle itself. And it works within the mitochondria. Okay, high blood pressure. The top two things that I recommend for that would be high levels of potassium because potassium helps keep the arteries um, elastic, preventing stiffness. It, potassium also acts as a diuretic if you're retaining fluid because you're on a high carb diet. And by the way, certain diuretics cause the loss of potassium. So instead of focusing on lowering your sodium, if you increase your potassium, you can help lower blood pressure and protect the heart. Because there's some really interesting data um, that you really need to know about relating to sodium. And I will put that link down below um, because if your sodium is too low, that can actually create more problems with not just the heart, but other parts of the body. And then vitamin D, okay? Vitamin D deficiency can create high blood pressure. So these two are very important in regulating blood pressure. Okay, homocysteine is an indicator that there is heart damage or there's going to be heart damage. Maybe one problem would be an enlarged heart, okay? And so if you have high homocysteine levels, you need more B vitamins, okay? Nutritional yeast is a really good source. And just so you know, the primary reason why people have a B vitamin deficiency is because they're consuming too many refined grains and, and even sugar. So nutritional yeast is a very key thing to keep your homocysteine levels low. Now, if someone does have cardiomegaly or in a large heart, B12 is a really good um, antidote and also making sure that you don't have too much iron, okay? Uh, and then tutka. Tutka is a type of bile salt that can help you against uh, an enlarged heart and also just uh, heart muscle damage in general. A murmur can come from many different sources, but if the heart is enlarged, guess what? The valves are not going to fit anymore and that can cause a murmur. So the B vitamins, again, are a good remedy for murmurs. And then we have a high pulse rate. If your pulse rate is too high, usually you're, you're too low in potassium because you're on a high carb diet, which actually depletes potassium. So more potassium can help lower the pulse rate. Now, by the way, if you have low blood pressure, you probably need more sodium, okay? More sea salt, or it could be that you need more adrenal support. Arrhythmias, that could uh, range anywhere from atrial fibrillation to just different arrhythmias to palpitations. Your electrolytes are off. You need more potassium, magnesium. Tutka, which is that unique type of bile salt that I mentioned, can also help with arrhythmias. One side note with arrhythmias that you need to know, um, electromagnetic fields uh, from your cell phones. Let's say you have your cell phone in your pocket next to your heart or your in front of your computer all day. Or like me, um, I had the entire back of my wall where I slept in my bedroom uh, had these wires that were crossed somehow. I had all sorts of high levels of electromagnetic fields that I was bathing in every night when I would sleep. That was affecting my, the rhythm of my heart. I got that corrected with an electrician and uh, my arrhythmias went away. 
And one interesting point about this, Arrhythmias, let's say you're uh, an athlete and you're a bike rider and you do a lot of exercise and you do like a sustained type of uh, exercise at a high level for a long period of time. What happens, the heart becomes so strong, um, it can throw off the electrical activity of the heart. And so it's not a pathological reason for arrhythmia, but it is a cause of arrhythmias that I did a video on. So I will put that link down below as well. All right, so that's some great data for the heart. Um, the other thing that I think you should watch would be relating to sodium, okay? The dangers of low sodium. Check it out, I put it right here.